Hola, Animigos, and welcome to Keyframers, the animated collaborative coding live stream where we bring imaginative user interfaces to life. I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, David Korshid, also known as at Steve K. Piano. Together, we are coding compadres, animation amigos, Boolean buddies, and keyframe companions. We'll be creating an animation from scratch live using HTML, CSS, and no Java, maybe some JavaScript, a little yeah, bit. Probably, probably just a entirely tiniest, in JavaScript. The tiniest bit. Hit us up in the chat if you uh, want JavaScript or no JavaScript. Uh, <laughs> This show is made possible by your support. You can pledge at patreon.com slash keyframers or hit the like and subscribe buttons uh, around the video wherever you're watching. Uh, additional links are available below. Yeah, and please ask questions, reach out in the chat or comments. We are here to interact with you. That's right. Uh, we're also happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, wait, you just said that. I, I'm lost. Uh, we we got off to a, <laughs> a strange start, uh, so we're we're yeah, here it. now and, and ready to go. Uh, would you uh, would you like to dive right in, David? Yeah. So we have a uh, pretty awesome animation that we're going to be doing today. Sure it's do. by Sang Wen uh, on Dribble. Uh, he makes a lot of cool stuff, and this is especially. One of the things that I like about this one is that it reminds me of an old, um, an old animation that we did a while ago. The uh, yes. twisted turntables or something turntables, turnable yes. turntables. Uh, yeah, I, the, the link for that will be in the chat. Um, that was that was a great one uh, with with a lot of uh, 3D CSS elements. Uh, we we really broke down uh, a lot of the a lot of the techniques there. Uh, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks in the chat. So we're going to be taking some of those techniques, and we're going to be um, applying some other techniques that we've done in different episodes as well, um, in order to craft this complex UI. That's right. Uh, yeah. So there's there's some some interesting stuff going on here. It's it seems in line with uh, with things we've we've done before. So hopefully. Um, would be uh, nice and straightforward for us. Man, if you look at all of this stuff, he just does 3D everything. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta it's dive so in. cool. Sing. So much fun. At my last job, I, or uh, previous to last job, I got replaced by a guy named Win Win. Hmm, Win Win. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Win Win situation. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm sure he got that all the time. I, I never actually met the guy. But... Oh, this is real. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that's not a bit. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's real. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some there's some great stuff in here. Oh, hey, a pizza one. It's fun. Mm, pizza, but the pizza's 2D. I think that pizzas are 2D. Unless you have a true Chicago pizza, that's a 3D pizza. Yes. Yes. A and... New York pizza, that's a nice <laughs> flat. Very difficult to eat. I, I, a 3D I like New York pizza. York pizza, but you know, I was born in Chicago, so. Oh, nice. Well, but we're not talking about pizza. We're today. not. We're talking about shoes. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, shall we uh, start coding some shoes? Um, yes. After I order my pizza. <laughs> yes. Uh, it is the beauty in the of uh, cameras is that you actually can't see. I'm not wearing any shoes right. Now. Really? So, uh, yeah, this this app is going to make me want to go buy shoes. I, I know. Um, so, uh, do you do you consider yourself a shoeber? Um, that's that's no, my name for no, people who are so like obsessed that. with shoes. Not, no, not really. Uh, see, I I have some nice shoes, but it's mostly just thanks to my wife buying me awesome shoes. <laughs> so, nice. yeah, I I enjoy a good pair of shoes, but I'm definitely not. Um, In Florida, we have sandals, or we're barefoot. It's pretty much year round. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good strategy for, for life. Yeah, typically. Uh, yeah, so uh, I went ahead and got some some cutout shoes here. Um, it's uh, it was a bit of a pain, but you know here we are. Um, and uh, yeah, what what do you think our our general approach should be here um, as as far as as far as layout goes? Well, so for layouts, we want to approach this in a uh, app-centric approach, which we've been doing with uh, many of our pens. 
Um, so if you look at the animation, we see that we have the shoes, the shoes are in a box. So we know that the shoes obviously need to be contained in something. Um, and of course, we'll just have wrapper elements for that. And then we also have the shoe information on the bottom. And so that gives us a clue that we have a collection of items, which are these shoe details. Um, and they all look the same. They all have the same layouts. Now, if we were to code this in, you know, a framework such as Reactor View, uh, you know, we would have each one of these views. And then once you press next, you know, it would just show a different shoe, different shoe information, maybe a different rating, different price, everything like that. The hard part, though, is the actual transition. But if we think about it as like these are separate views and nothing is actually moving in terms of like the, the shoe container you know what i mean like the shoe item yeah that's never going to move what's going to move is the items inside and so all of the shoe containers are going to be or the shoe layers i should say are going to be right on top of each other yeah like nice vulcanized rubber <laughs> yes all right so let's see uh and so we already have that basically set up here. We have a shoe selector, and then we have each one of the shoes represented by a uh, shoe class. Uh, yeah, and, and these, these could probably be figures. We could do whatever there. Um, uh, but why, why don't I get, um, get some layering happening here? Yeah, let's do that. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll do the, the trick we are oft using in episodes now. Um, so grid template one one, um, and then shoe grid area one one. Wow, that's a jumble of shoes. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, that looks like a looks like my closet right now. <laughs> right, that's uh, that's not exactly uh, what we want. Uh, Align right. content center. So at the same time, we'll just add a little uh, border to the app or something. Make it like um, line items. Let's see. Um, like that. Yeah, that's nice. You know, here's our app basically. So you could just imagine this is our this is our uh, phone, iPhone, Android. Yes. Whatever you want it to be. And then we have the shoes in the background. So. Yeah, so I, I'm actually going to remove the, the frame there, um, or, or the, the fixed width on app, and I'm going to set a, a fixed width on shoe. And this way, um, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have some, some bleed over um, for, for the kind of 3D and like slide in effect. Um, All right, fair enough. All right. Well, all right, wait, wait, where are you removing? Uh, so the width yes. is the width is just down here on shoe. Um, oh, okay, yeah, but this, uh, the, hmm. Shaw. Here's, here's the funny thing about phones. Unless you have one of those foldable phones, they don't really change width. So. Well, I, sure, but I'm talking for, for desktop, you know, we can, uh, we can have, we can have the overflow of the of the items off all off right. to the side I, and i guess you know we can have that with the fixed width frame anyway but um all right yeah all right uh okay so how would how would you like to handle the uh the actual like shoe selection like which which shoe is active so um we're going to be doing the, uh, or we could do the same technique that we have been doing all along. Like, let's say, just for the sake of uh, you know, demonstration, we have a data active class on the third shoe. And so we could say, all right, where's our shoes? Shoe, shoe, shoe. So, and dot data active, we could say that this is like, just, just to demonstrate opacity one, everything else is opacity zero. And then we see that that's the, whoop, Oh <laughs> yeah, gotta make gotta make sure that's a that's a natural. Okay, yeah. So now we have these uh, you know new balances, nice and highlighted. Nice. Yeah, and, and so we'll use a data a data attribute just like we've been using in previous episodes yeah. as well to do that. 
And so I think the idea is we could do the same sort of transition thing that we've been doing, even for the 3D effects mm -hmm. uh, for, for the shoes. And so we could use visibility, visible visibility, hidden, all of that. And um, yeah, in, in my view, the only tricky part about this really is going to be the 3D box. But that's also going to be the most fun parts too. Yeah. Uh, why don't we why don't we knock out the uh, the basics of the of the transition um, and and you know just this this kind of state changing and then and then we'll get into the get into the three D. Um, all right, fair enough. Uh, all right. Well, in that case, we need to add a little bit of content, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. In the yeah. Uh, well, while while you're adding some some HTML content, I'll I'll do just uh, a simple toggle with. Um, with uh, JavaScript down here, so document dot query selector all. We'll do dot shoe <laughs> shoe box. Um, so L shoes, we've got them here selected. We'll do an array from that, and then run a for each on it. So shoe. Uh, so shoe dot add event listener click and then a little function here or um, let's see we'll look for document dot query selector all and change the data after shoe to the first one just so I can see what I'm doing. Yes. Those are not Nike Air Maxes. Those are Converse's. Converse, <laughs> high top, whatever they're called. I, I'm sure we'll get some some call outs uh, if we use the <laughs> wrong ones. Yeah, that's okay. Each. Uh, L dot data set dot active. Uh, that will be delete work and then um, shoe data set dot active equals true and we we really don't need any any flipping or anything nope, like that nothing like that so far um, so that'll be be fine um, So in theory, let me do 0 0.5 so I can see another shoe and click it. Okay. Yeah, that, that seems to be working um, just by enter. Uh, let me see if that, yeah. Okay. That's, that's toggling back and forth. Uh, it's a little hard to see right there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, do the basics of this transition. So this is something we've um, we've done before. Transform translate x negative 100 percent. Let's take off that opacity. Do transform trans uh, transform none on the active one, and then we'll use the adjacent sibling selector. Do transform translate x 100 percent. For all the following shoes, and hmm. right, so right now they're all they're all just kind of a jumble um, on each other. But you can see when we when we click left, um, that that goes uh, that starts cycling through them. Right now we've got just some z indexing stuff. Um, what I like to do um, is the immediate adjacent sibling selector what what's the plus called uh the the sibling selector just uh, the, the direct sibling selector yeah closest sibling closest sibling selector yeah, yeah. uh plus shoot let's see that down below to right there we go okay cool all right that's it's working pretty well um, we can also just do z index five on that. Um, wanted to uh, okay. Yeah, they they stack up a little on the on the left, unfortunately, but that's all right. 
And I'm actually going to break that out into a specific section so that we can handle the animation instead of the layout there. That's just helpful for organizing. Where are you putting where? Uh, I'm, I'm just breaking out the, the actual um, animation-ish portion, the transition portion uh, from the layout. Oh, um, so that it's a little easier to follow. Transition, transform. I'll say our duration, our ease. And up top here, we'll set our CSS variables. That's what we want to do. Uh, let's see. Duration, 0.6 seconds. Is here 0.5, 0 0.5, 1. Hmm. So, all right, yeah, this. Ah, okay. So, the shoe selector, I need to just make it full height. Just letting you know. Boom. There we go. Nice. I think like, wait, oh, no, yes. that did not do what I wanted it to do. It this here. There we go. All right. There we go, sort of. <laughs> huh. Hmm. Uh so talk us talk us through what you're doing. Grid, CSS grid, some fun, fun grid grid stuff. Uh, so for whatever reason, if I do 50%, then auto, auto, 1FR, this auto thing isn't really, oh, you know what? Let's try that. Maybe content. Nope. Hmm. Okay, so I, I'm trying to do grid, and so I just have like a 2 by 4 sort of grid for the shoe. Oh, wait, why do I have it on the shoe? No, wait. No, 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 uh, so, so ah, one thing, so I yeah. Have a shoe box. Uh, wait, no, no, no. Hey, so, so right uh, on 72, you had uh, just grid template rows auto on there that was oh, messing okay. it up. Oh, yeah. Um, so 50% min content. So the 50% means that the shoes are going to take 50% of the screen. The min content, or I guess auto now, uh, it means it's just going to fit whatever the text is. And then the rest of the space is going to be filled with, uh, you know, just a space for the rating and the other button and stuff like that. So, yeah. And so with our class names, we're also being really semantic just because, you know, we, we don't know what kind of classes you're going to be using, whether it's BEM or, um, I don't know whatever Tailwind uses, like functional CSS and things like that. Uh, but we don't talk about that. We have opinions here. Or, er, okay, sorry, that's my opinion. I don't know if that's yours. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fine with that. Uh, I'm not. Uh, just breaking a few things. Nice. All right. Two. All right, so is, is all that pretty pretty stable um, for the the actual content? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll I'll replace the other uh, shoes with that. Uh, Perfect. Syntax. Yeah. So the one big change I made was I put the shoe in the shoe box. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Which uh, you know makes sense. Yeah. In, in real life. Go. We we want our shoes in the shoe box. So. Okay. So shoes. Shoes two. It's four. Oh, take the data active off. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps, you know, only having one data active. And there, okay, so there might be another thing I have to do as well, uh, which 
Don't worry, I'll correct it in the HTML. But like we've seen in previous episodes, when we want to obscure something in an animation, we sort of need to wrap it inside of another, uh, just another element. So for example, that shoe rating, we could wrap it in a, in a span. Mm -hmm. And that way, uh, when we actually animate the shoes, we could animate just that span inside instead of animating the, um, you know, the entire thing. So that'll be obscure, it'll be nice, and it'll be good. Super cool. Mm -hmm. I just want to add a transition, you know, style to everything, but it's not really a good idea. So instead, yeah, we will use um, our CSS variables. It's always better not to, um, not to abstract things at, you know, first. Instead, just allow yourself to be dry. That's what I'm thinking right now for, uh, how are you going to choose to move? Uh, so it's, it's up above. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I moved that out to, um, to okay, its own cool. little segment so that it would, uh, all right. So yeah, uh, for the shoes, it's not going to be the entire thing moving. I guess that's just a proof of concept, right? Well, so uh, what I was thinking with this is the uh, is the background is going to be fixed, and it's it's all that um, all that content that's uh, that's moving. So um, yeah, sorry. Let me go back to the, the animation. Are you sure. I don't know because nah that. Hmm. Okay, so no, it's it's just the shoe box that that needs this uh, shifting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, right. Just so shoe we'll do box, shoe, so. and then uh, shoe box. This and then um, active uh, shoe box transform none, and then shoe. Yeah, just uh, shoe box. Uh, shoe box. And then, yeah, what's going to end up happening? Oh, fine. Oh, yeah, those aren't <laughs> those aren't full width. I don't think. Yeah, those. Yeah, I guess those should be full width. Grid template columns. Uh oh. So, uh, shoe box down here in the layout. Um, grid column one dash negative one. That needs to match the full width. Oh, shoe box. There we go. Okay, so those are full width now. Um, so that should shift correctly. And then mm -hmm. um, we'll go back up here. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to move our animation or transition code down to the bottom so it's easy for us to, to find. Go. All right. stacking up on the left side there but play with that a little bit uh -huh. right what are you doing there just getting the oh yeah so this is just so um and i guess i need the trans transition there too so transition transform fair duration fair Use. And so that way, uh, with the with the active one, we could say you know, we, we we could target each of these elements. Dot shoe rating, and so we could say span. And so I guess the span will be our little experiments for here. So transform none. Uh, we can actually move this down below with the other. Well, okay. Let's see, okay. Yep, that's yeah. So it's doing it right, and of course for the uh, we want a data active plus, right? Uh, plus. Really, or is that somewhere a, else? Really, after um, any any adjacent sibling is fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot what we did. So shoot, or we could do plus and, but let's not make it confusing. Let's do. And yeah, shoot. I I am gonna move this uh, down into um, the 
in, into the animation, uh, the transition code at the at the bottom. Um, so it's just it's oh, okay. just more wow. grouped. Um, data active. So yeah, that'll all just. At least now that's working. You see the uh, you see the ratings change. Oh wait. Yeah, no. I <laughs> broke it. Sorry, but uh, yes. There there go. Go. <laughs> yep. So that's just sliding in and out. It's awesome. Cool. And so the cool thing about it is that the box is a completely different box, right? Yeah. No. Uh, what what box is a completely different box? Uh, the uh, the rating. So because right. we have all these layers on top of each other. Um, so so that's why I was saying we could do that instead of the fixed background idea because that's going to get really 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 messy. Yeah. So. Uh. What else? Yeah. Uh, okay. So there, there is, there is the problem though. It, um, let's see. What's the problem? Uh, so the way that they're overlaid, uh, if you click any of the content, it clicks everything. Uh, like it, oh. it, it clicks the last one um, because because the content is all overlaid. Um, so what I did there real quick, pointer events none, pointer events auto on the shoebox, um, and then data active, pointer events auto as well. Um, so if you click the shoes, it, it works, because uh, those have pointer events auto. Um, but if you click the content, that doesn't uh, do anything. So that work. And do we need a transition there? Mm -hmm. Go. Oh, did you add it? Oh, you're adding it up there. Okay. Yeah. All right, sure. Uh oh, where am I headed? Oh, wait, yeah, forgot to. We need opacity one for those. There. Oh, oops. Okay. This is sort of organized. <laughs> so, this, of course, transform none. And a lot of these things are going to have the same type of animation. So, right now, we're just uh, we're not really being too dry, but could be. Yes. Um, I thought I made a subhead. I totally did. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So I'm. I I am grouping all like the um, all shoes after data active. Um, I'm moving that down here. Gotcha. Box, and then do e. And then and then we have yeah okay so we have three groups all shoes before data active all shoes after data active and the current shoe. Um, yes. So we have a different state or like state of like where it is for each. So for example, the shoes before, they're going to be translated to the left. The shoes after, they're going to be translated to the right, but they're not going to move right because they're going to be invisible already. Um, at least we hope so. Uh, so one Let's thing to do here for shoe rating. Man, shoe is one of those words when you look at it a lot, it just feels really weird. Yeah, it's such a who. <laughs> Who made that word? Like in in German, it's S C H U or something like that. It, oh, really? it, it like makes sense to spell. Well, I guess shoe also makes sense to spell. Ooh, yeah, that works for me. I know. I'm, I'm thinking about too much. Uh, so one thing I did is is lessened the uh, amount of the transition for the title there. If you if you look back at the animation, well, I guess they are they're sliding super fast. I need to adjust that easing. Um, let me go ahead and make a fast ease variable. So this would be something like 0 0.7, 0 point, uh, well, 0 
Are you playing with numbers? Yes. As always. Uh, so shoe rating. We want fasties. Um, and then shoe heading. All fasties the sounds like the name of a shoe. <laughs> or like a infomercial. Like, fasties. Yeah. Fasties apply directly to the shoes. <laughs> or fast and easy walking. <laughs> exactly. Uh, shoe header. Yeah. All right. That's, that's feeling pretty nice. Yeah, we just need to, uh, forgot to get the uh, shoe heading, shoe subheading, that's shoe price. And so uh, in previous episodes, we also tackled this, which we, we don't really have to do now, but we tackled this by adding a, uh, another data attribute for you know, saying which type of animation. Uh, but right now we're just sort of hard coding those in just because we don't have too many items to animate. We just have the subheading the shoe and the shoe price yes. and that that works out just fine yes indeed does ladies have an apostrophe after it i don't know <laughs> i yeah <laughs> would not know mm. it it could. Oh, English. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got the we got the overall elements of that here. Um, anything else we we need to clean up at the moment? The no, I think that for now this is fine, and we should probably uh, move on to the box. Onto the box, huh? Oh goodness! All right. So yeah, this this is something we did uh, before in, in turnable tables. Um, we we did a very similar kind of kind of effect. That's uh, that's nice. Um, th overall, the approach with three D CSS uh, requires just more elements than you would want. Uh, and uh, let's see. So shoe. Uh, not Shoebox, uh, yeah, shoebox. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna start section right before the animation for our uh, 3D-ish effects. So shoe selector. We'll do transform style. Wait. Uh, so we'll do a perspective. About 600 pixels is what I normally do. Uh, we can adjust that. And then um, for shoot box, we'll do transform style, serve 3D. Uh, and then let's say within that, we do image, transform, rotate X five degrees. Squishy shoes. Yeah. Uh, because we also 25 degrees, let's do negative, let's see, is that actually applying the, no it's not because I think we need to do this, Yeah. do dot shoe, transform style, preserve 3D. Mm -hmm. So it might, it might look like black magic what <laughs> Shaw is doing right now. Um, I could sort of explain if, um, do we want to pull up the whiteboard? Yeah. Let's see. All right. Yeah. This that, is very new for us. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's definitely working. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's head on over to the whiteboard and talk about, whoa, look at that. Look at you. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whiteboard. Hello. Hello, David. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's talk, uh, 3d transforms a little bit. Yeah. So the idea is, let's say that we have, um, a box, right? We have a box, you know, we have our, our shoe in the box. Hopefully that's a nice shoe, whatever. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> so the idea is that we're going to take this box and we're going to 
transform it in a sort of 3D plane like that. And uh, so that, of course, that's going to be on the, uh, you know, we have our axes over here. And we have our, oh, shoot, that's the erase button. <laughs> oh, this is fun. All right. There we go. And so we, we, um, we just apply a transform rotate to this. And so that's what. That I believe goes. that's uh, rotating on the X axis uh yeah, because so this here, this line see. uh let me see so this i forget i forget what the here. standard colors are yeah that that's x the standard y, colors are blue blue and blue <laughs> if i remember correctly I yes x, our y arrow and our z arrow or z depending on which side of the world you're from and so when we rotate this um imagine that this is our platform and this is our platform for the box that we're going to build upon. So we could actually take uh, some, either some pseudo elements or because we have four different sides, uh, like actual element elements. And let's say that we have an element right, oh geez, it's hard to draw straight lines. I really need to practice. Right over here. Okay. So think about this as a flat pizza box or a shoe box or whatever. That's, that's a great way to think about it, like a folded up box yeah. uh, that you would get from the shipping, shipping code. So by rotating it on, you know, of course, uh, when it's flipped, this is going to be the uh, x-axis. Yeah. Then if we rotate it like negative nine degrees, we could stand it up like that. And then so we could just do the rest for each of the other sides as well. Yeah, nine degrees. Um, so in essence, you know, I actually have a ruler. So I'm just going to use the ruler. <laughs> Some old school stuff right here. Ah, much better. OK, so we have that. We have that. And so you can imagine each of these just being uh, elements that we rotate. But the tricky part is knowing where to rotate them. So this one is going to be rotated on the Y axis. And so is this one, Y axis. Um, or actually, yeah, it is a Y axis. Because the confusing part is when the platform is rotated, then everything else sort of changes too. So. Um, that's one of the trickiest parts is like just imagining uh, which parts are which. So let me let me just try to demonstrate that real quick. Uh, so let's say we have x and y over here. Uh, so when things are transformed on that, actually no, no, no. we're we're fine. So this is going to be transforming on the x-axis, and then if we're doing anything on the side, this is going to be transforming it on the y-axis because we want these to rotate on their edges like that in order to just sort of unfold this box. So hopefully that makes sense. Long story short, we are unfolding a box and we're using four elements to do it. So Right, right. so right, all of these, oops. Yes. Yes. So we'll have all of all of the elements for each of the sides uh, and and the top, and we're just going to rotate them all into place in 3D space. Uh, so let's let's give that a shot. All right. So let's uh, start with the the very first shoe box up here. Uh, we're just going to add some extra elements in here. Um, let's see. All right, just ignore that for a moment. So here's the actual. Uh, let's see, we can do the sides. Yeah, that's all fine. It's like that. All right, so I've given the shoe box uh, six sides: uh, top, front, back, left, right, and bottom. It's a lot of sides. Yes, uh, and then what I'm gonna do here. Let's, uh, you know, speed it up a little bit. Shoebox, uh, paste this in. 
that. Necessarily want one in. Um, that's, yes. That's fine. And so I'm going to try to find. Um, there's other episodes where we've done this. I'm going to probably turn to the turntable episode. Yes. Uh, and provide a link to that, unless unless we already have one. There. Uh, yeah. There's there's one in the chat, but you can you can certainly share it again. Um, let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. One fun exercise to do in order to really increase your CSS skills is to learn how to um, make a cube. And so I, I really, really encourage you to try to figure it out on your own first. Like, just think about using this unfolding technique. How would you make a 3D cube, one that you could rotate and spin and even uh, transform, translate, animate? Um, yeah, it's a really fun exercise. And there's not one specific way to do it. There's multiple ways to do it. Just because, uh, you know, you could have... Um, you need, you know, you're, you're going to need more than one element. I think there are people who could do a one element 3D CSS cube, I believe. I don't know if that's a thing. I hope that's not a thing because that sounds crazy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if that would, if that would work. No. Uh, so let's see. Let's go 60 viewport width, and this will be 40 viewport width. Something like that. And then... Um, do transform to give it uh, some e c looking 3d already sort of yeah off the 3d image transform Make sure that Oh, see, oh, so neat. Oops. Because what? Thing. Yeah, there we go. Whoa. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> there's a. Wildness happening. Uh, a lot of wildness. <laughs> a lot of wildness. But in shallow. So we'll do this is actually 40, something like 30. That's feeling it's in boxy. Mm -hmm. All right. Ah, colorful too. Nice. Uh, uh, right. So what I've done here is I, I this is a, a technique I've, I've uh, done done elsewhere. I've copied this this in to just make it uh, make it easier um, because the, the math and the specific rotations for each side get get uh, tricky. So what's happening here? Uh, we've got our shoebox uh, with some CSS bars in here. Let's just take that out. Uh, and uh, so the width is width of the box. Height is the height of the box, and these uh, that that corresponds to the x axis. This corresponds to y. This corresponds to z. Um, so depth is is how much it's it's kind of poking out at your at your face there. Um, so I set the width and the height and the height on the actual shoe box um, because the sides inside of it uh, take up the the same amount of of space basically. Um, and so all of the sides are, are fitting in there. Um, they're position absolute, top 50%, left 50%, so that they're in the center. Um, and then for uh, each of the sides, they're translated negative 50%, ne negative 50% to center them based on their size. Uh, and then they're given a var rotation uh, in, the, in the transform function. Uh, and this is set later. Uh, and then the translate Z uh, is also set later. Um, this is what um, uh, what gives it um, the the specific place in um, in the the 3D space uh, because because this is happening after the rotation. Uh, 
Um, so basically the side gets rotated and then it gets pushed out. Um, oh, did you change something? Yeah, I made the entire background white out. Ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All That's right. the thing you shouldn't do. So front and back uh, are, are red. Um, so that actually might be... Yeah, I guess I guess that's fine. That should probably be top and bottom. Um, yeah, I'm gonna change these uh, to be front and back, um, top, bottom, front, back. There we go. All right. Uh, so top and bottom will be the top of the shoebox um, is, is what's happening now. So that's that's red. Um, so that's that's why the shoes are have that kind of red overlay. Um, so the the Z on that is the value of depth. So that's how how um, how far it should move in the in the 3D space. And the rotation for it is down here. Uh, so the top you rotate Y. Um, uh, zero degrees on bottom you rotate y 180 degrees so um, that that pushes it back in the 3d space because it's flipped around on the y-axis and then translated um, and and that this all you know gets gets very mathy and and weird so um, just try and go with it as much as you can uh, so right right and left sides those are green you can see a little bit of the green through there um, they're set to the width uh, their width as the depth because they're actually going to be, you know, popped up like this, uh, and then their their z, uh, how how far they need to move out from the center is the the width, um, and then so their rotate y, ninety degrees and negative ninety degrees that pushes them off in the in opposite directions, uh, and then same for the the front and the in the back. So fronts up here, backs uh, down here, I believe, is is how it ends up being. Um, so front, got a rotation 90 degrees, uh, rotate x 90 degrees, rotate x negative 90 degrees for the back, um, and then the width and the and the height for those is is changed so that it matches the the proper side there. Did that make any sense at all? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well. Uh, dive, dive into that a little bit more for yourselves. Um, there's there's a lot of good stuff happening there. Um, and let's see. All right. So what what we're going to want to do is yes. animate that that top. Um, now now that we have you know this this kind of 3D box, we'll we'll play with that a bit more uh, later. Um, but we'll do uh, shoebox top. Transform. Um, to change. Yeah, gotta copy this down here. Top transform rotation. Z. This was the trickiest part of the turnable tables, I believe. Um, do you call it the terrible tables? <laughs> turnable tables. <laughs> terrible tables. Turnable. Uh, no, it was it was great. It was a beautiful uh -huh, episode. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, uh, so, getting getting it actually to rotate from the the proper position. Um, so that's that's going to be fun. Uh, let's just real quick. This will do. Data active. Up. I'll go ahead and put box stuff next so we can see that. Yeah, so we've got our two boxes exactly side by side. We'll, we'll play with that. Um, let's see. Form. So I actually want to rotate. Degrees. That's it's pretty close. Uh, Whoa! <laughs> nice and nice and tall. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, that that a little bit of that is thanks to our perspective, which you bumped down to two hundred picks. That actually needs to be higher. Um, hmm. uh, so the the higher you go with the perspective, the less of a perspective you get. Uh, it it seems counterintuitive to me. I'm sure there's some um, you know real math uh, behind that. Um, but something something like five or six hundred is usually a lot. Um, a lot nicer of a of an effect and then that will will adjust the size of the box there with that depth value All right let's say i think this is how we do it the Negative one. Oh, uh, this should actually be right. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right uh, value for that. Uh, pixel pushing. <laughs> in 3D space. Yeah, yeah, in 3D space, it feels like pixel pushing is acceptable. Yeah. No. 2D things have to be more precise, but 3D, yeah. they rarely. Uh. It's really just finding the right value. That's ish. Box top position form duration or so if you have any questions about this, just go ahead and ask them in the chat. Please do. So I could translate what he's doing. <laughs> right. Uh yeah, that's that's Almost right, uh, but what we need to do is add in the proper I swear if I see a single magic number <laughs> you're fired. Uh well They're good so far. You know, I see lots of 1s, 50s, and 90. Oh, that's 9 degrees. We're good. <laughs> yeah, so this might actually need to move. Get it into place, and then... This is some advanced transformation stuff, but basically it's like you're, <laughs> you're getting as imperative as you can with... CSS, which when it comes to transforming 3D things is uh, is acceptable. I mean, there's not much you could do. So you're basically telling CSS right now, um, do this, then do that, then do that, in order to get it positioned in the correct place. Um, now, the declarative way to do this is completely human unreadable, which is why we're doing it this way. So the, the declarative way to do this would be to use a transform matrix, but we were not you know, idiots of aunts are like, you know, geniuses in math or whatever. So we can't just put random numbers in how it works. So yeah, fun fact about CSS, 3D transforms, <laughs> is that all this is implicitly converted to a transfer matrix in, um, you know, in the actual rendering engine. Right. Uh, so we could copy that after. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, getting into magic number territory. Um, let's see. Let's see. 
so basically the the trick is uh for this um that we have to uh we have to transform it from the right point we have to we have to trigger that rotation from the top right now we we have it rotated into place kind of from the center uh from the, the center origin um mm. So we have to basically change that origin with transform functions, um, which gets a tricky here. Uh, okay, so we've got it rotated. Right, so if I take off the rotate X is what we want, but we have to trigger that rotate X from the proper point. Um, so to By the way, while you're doing that, I'm adding a, um, this is something we talked about before and hopefully it doesn't destroy anything, <laughs> but I'm adding Probably. a data animates data attribute, um, which is going to signify which parts we want animated. Um, and so just like Thanos, I'm going to visibility hidden on everything uh, inside the shoe. Uh, except for those data animated things, which of course need to be visible. So let me try that. This is going to explode. Actually, no, I'm going to try to, this is like a diffusing a bomb or something. Like I just had to cut the right wires. Everything's going to be fine. I promise. Everything will be fine. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. So visibility visible. So first I'm doing the happy case where <laughs> things are visible. Or actually, we could say not data animate. So basically, everything that's not data animate. No, just kidding. So, and there's a reason for that. Animate, uh, data animate, and everything inside. So, all right, three, two, one. Okay, the box disappeared. Wait, no, it did mm. the active box disappeared that you Yeah. Uh because it does not have data animate on it. You did that on Yeah, data animate. There. Did I forget something? Yeah. It's fine now. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, but my reading disappeared, so there's yeah. that. <laughs> uh Oh, you know what? Yeah, I just had to add that enemy on that as well. No. Oh, oh, oh. Um, only when the shoe is not active do we want everything to be hidden. So, and not. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. Breaking something. Yeah, it's active. Me? Yes, I'm breaking everything. Oh, it works. Oh man, your your uh your visibility thing. I'm I'm getting used to it. <laughs> no, I I never you know before I started the keyframers, I never thought to use visibility hidden. I just thought like uh, display none, and then if something inside a display nothing needs to be visible, I'm like, oh well, crap. How do I do this? So I just uh stuck it outside the HTML or something. But that is such a neat trick, using visibility hidden. Are we down to two items? Like, uh, 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 no, I, I think you just might need to add data animate in some more places. I don't, not sure what's happening. Oh, here. did I forget? Yeah. OK, let's see. Let's see. Shoebox. Yes, so, to all the shoeboxes in the world. We need to uh, data animate. Is it an HTML error? Like, we'll just, no, you know what? HTML is extremely forgiving. So if I have data animate, data animates, then nothing bad happens. Amazing. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, yes. Yeah. We are I, oh, good. Sorry, I'm covering up your face with my dev tools. Uh, I don't worry about That's it. okay. Um, <laughs> so don't update the HTML for just a moment. I need to check something. Fine. I'm fine, fine. All 
I will completely mess up the CSS though. Uh, that's that's fair. Um. Doing something to um, help me debug a little bit. Oh, this will be fun. Div classical shoe box wrap. Hmm. Break a few things. Okay. Woo. Yeah. No, nothing's broken. Nothing uh, too dramatic. All right, so what I've what I've done here is uh, added in some range sliders to help us control the uh, the 3D. Can you see that, David? Yes, yes, I can. Ooh, fun! <laughs> All right. Uh, so what I've done: um, input type equals range uh, from zero to 360. Um, just representing each of the axes. Um, so there's there's X, Y, and Z, uh, and they just have an on input uh, where uh, an on input function uh, where whenever <coughs> you update the value, uh, it it sets that as a CSS variable on the parent. So you can see with Z uh, rotate Z, it's spinning around that way. Uh, with X, it's spinning around this way. Y spins around this way towards us. So my goal here is to um, figure out what's wrong with my positioning. Um, thanks to that. Let's see. Going back down here to top. To... Uh, that... So height negative one, I don't think is proper value there. So if we do height 0.5, okay, let's get closer. Five. Okay. X negative 90 degrees. Oh. Okay, that's revealing a little bit. We want to actually 0.5, negative. That, okay, I think that's right. All right, so if I copy this up here, add these back in, I want zero, zero, zero. And in theory, okay, all right, uh, times point, uh, divided by two is what that actually needs to be. Aha, kind of success. Hey, kind of success is the best kind of success. Uh, so let me see if I simplify that anymore. So yeah, by doing that, I'm rotating from the proper place, uh, but it's not in the correct position. If I take that off completely, it's just centered. Do that, it's gonna be off there. So let's see. If we move this up here. Move this up here. Right, that kind of does it. Um, but you can see the lid isn't exactly 
moving, but that that should be covered up. Uh, kind of. That should kind of be covered up. Um, let's do. There's 45. So there's another. I know you're getting pretty mathy here, but yeah, there's, there's another thing loves. you could do to make that a little bit easier. I probably should have mentioned at the very beginning. Wrap it up. Um, no, 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 not exactly. But that lid should be part of that top, um, like inside the top elements. And that way you just do the same technique and you just transform it based on that. But that's more nesting and stuff like that. So there's, there's you no know, advantages and disadvantages to that. Yeah. Span S equals lid. Let's let's try that really quick, just to just to see if we can simplify. I mean, because keyframers here is all about showing you the successes and the failures. Mm -hmm. We'll see the successes. All right. Let's so see. we've got uh, dot lid inside that we want uh, to have transition, uh, and what we're gonna do there is um, we'll do top visibility hidden lid visible background red width 100% right 100% do anything background no. purple And class equals lid. Uh, I guess that should be a div for display blocking. Okay. Top visibility hidden did not work. I think. Uh, at any rate, let's let's give that a try. We can adjust that in a bit. Um, so transform origin. Uh, let's see, transform style preserve. D is form origin top center and then down here in data active dot shoebox dot lid transform rotate x 90 degrees and kind of let's see. Kind of good. Yeah. Where did it go? Form style preserve three D. Is it? Oh, it's not top. That we want it's. Wait, wait is it? No. Oh, uh, fun. Help me so, out. Help me out here. I'm losing my. Okay, okay, okay. So you, you're trying the, the lid on the side top. Yes. All right. So side top, it's rotated on the top, which means it's going to be. It's just the other. All right. Uh, okay. Back to the whiteboard, real quick. I just want to. Oh, try. okay. So top may not actually be top. Is the issue so bottom top. switch that real quick? That should be hidden background. Okay. On whiteboard this real quick, just so that we don't lose our sanity. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what we have is we have. Um, all right. So this this is our uh, the top hat. Uh, which which elements is this? The red one. 
Uh, that should be um, the front or the or the back. So this is the so base. that, and then this is the top, whatever we called it. So this my my colors are wrong. But it, yeah, <laughs> bottom, and then um, this is either front or back. So the idea is that this green is going to be the uh, it's going to be a child of this, and the, uh, the no, top is child of that. And so that way, uh, this is just something that's rotated from the. Uh, uh, we could say that this is. Uh, Translate x and work into uh no wait not translate x we're going to uh rotate x just kidding so rotate x and the x is going to rotate I forgot the rule of um I don't know something <laughs> ninety degrees yeah right uh so what i what i actually have set up right now is uh let's see not this this um so i'm gonna do let's see green to represent this here um so this right here is the top and then this is the lid readable sure uh, so within within the top, I've got the lid element that uh, we will then yeah rotate x plus or minus negative ninety degrees something like that. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So yeah. it should it, it's the same it's the same kind of principle, but for some reason the um, the three D ness of the transform is not uh, occurring. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Um, mid display lock absolute up go left zero. Dial, let's do forty five degrees so we can see it. See? I've got transform style preserve three D. Um, take off this hidden because that's not even working right at the moment. Um, yeah, do you see anything that's off with that? So I'm online like 240. Um, here, let's take a look. So 240, top visibility hidden. Let's just play around with things right now. Um, Hmm. Parts the lid. Let's find out where the lid is. All right, side top lid. Okay, so is this? These are the only places where the lid is declared, right? So we have yeah. top zero, left zero with a hundred height, a hundred, and that's taking the full width of the height. Great. Right. It, so it should be yes. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to transform origin. Yeah, I had that set. I took it off so that we don't could actually it see it. Or top center. All right. So now let's uh, try. And oh, also we need to make sure that um, yeah, transform style preserve three D is on absolutely everything inside this. Yeah, so that's that's what I did um, right there with and uh, perspective inherits. Uh, that uh, shouldn't be necessary with uh, preserve three D. It should just be oh, using well, the parent. I don't know. I err on the side of caution. All right, so I I don't see the lid being lifted. Right, it, it's it's in there, um, but let's see, let's see one twenty hidden. Okay. That's that's what it is. Opacity jacks. Oh, with okay. You know what? Uh, 
will change transform. No. The issue is Sorry. it has opacity uh, right now. Oh, okay. So it needs, okay. yeah. Okay, so top gotcha. center, rotate. Okay, not negative 40. Or, yeah, negative 90 degrees. What we want. 61 is hidden. Center X negative still okay. I I may have uh, incorrectly swapped top and bottom. Mm. There we go. Okay, and now the direction is to be and here a right. That's what we want. Now, nice. yeah, I can take out these uh, ranges because they're messing with the it there. Take out shoebox wrap. Not anymore. Okay. Should work. Go. Flex. Shoes are now centered in the box. Mm -hmm. Just need to add Just more, one. add more boxes. Um, oh yeah, nice yeah. and tedious. Do you want help with that? <laughs> uh, yes, please. We'll just okay, start that's, you start that's... from the bottom. We'll meet in the middle. Okay, that that's a interesting strategy. We will see how it works. Let's see. So all I have to do is replace this little. Oh my god, everything is moving. <laughs> all right, we'll be fine. There we go. I did one. Yay. Um, and okay, you you knocked it out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> See, we met in the kind of middle. Uh, I helped. I participated. All right, so okay, dimensions are a little bit off somewhere. I think in the one that I did, um, I messed up. Let's see, div 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 div. Ah, there's two shoe boxes. Okay, of course, the only one that I helped out with is the one that messed up. But nice. Whatever. Cool. Let's uh let's get some color into this thing. Yeah. All right. So um yeah, that's just all set. Uh let's see, where is that? Where is that? Sign. So take off these two. Um, background Bug or background or box color. Uh, do you have a value for box? No, let me grab that real quick. Okay. So we want to. the inside of the box, box inner. Oh my god, they're moving. And, I, and I'm not pausing the video. Outer. Okay, got it. Yeah. I'm just going to call it orange. Oh, wait, you already have it. Or you don't have it. I, I don't. Uh, I, just, I just gave them a value. What we want. There you go. Color orange. Uh, box. Mark. Do this here. Outer pink. Inner. Uh, 
that. Oh, you know. So you do. Uh. Oh, that needs to be our declarations. There we go. All right, so it's actually it's else. So colorful. All right, so top we want to be our box outer. So right now you're just coloring things, right? Yes. Uh, so All feel right. free to talk about something interesting. Yeah, we could talk about how my rating is messed up and uh yeah <laughs> i'm figuring that out right now because uh god knows why that happened but we could take a look at it all right so like shoe rating span hmm trans one translate negative 50 percent opacity zero what if we didn't do opacity zero ah i see what's happening yeah let's try that some trans oh wait 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 wait, wait. Hmm. Nope, might still need that. Okay, so um, basically getting those uh, constant elements to also translate uh, uniformly at the same time. Everything is behaving except for that silly little uh, span rating. So I'm trying to, yeah. I don't believe I said that already. But let's see, translate. Okay, we're going to take off all the custom stuff and just make the animations exactly the same throughout you know, the box. And that's that's something that, you know, you could try to just don't um don't try to uh you know make specific animations, have everything be the exact same animation and then from there you could tweak it and have specific animations for each item. So hopefully that'll help me in debugging. Maybe maybe not. <laughs> Let's see what's happening here. All right, all shoes after we have shoe heading, shoe heading, shoe heading, shoe price span. Ah, here we go. And shoe rating span. And of course, uh, remember those data attributes I added? I'm going to use those to uh, use those for the animation instead of hard coding every single thing that's animated in there. So, uh, where are you, by the way? I'm trying Don't to track you a little bit. Are you just conjecturing? I'm conjecturing. Oh, wait, it's not working because did you know that class names need a period in front of them? Uh, Who typically, typically they do. Yeah, it's such a, such a weird restriction thing. Okay, time to try this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace a lot of things with, which already scares you, with data animates. So, <laughs> very scared. And you already saw some things disappear. I'm very sorry about that, but I will have those back to you pretty shortly. Um, are they back? They're back. Yes. But they're also, there are some that are disappeared. And so I'm trying to figure out what the cause of it. Oh, you know what? Uh, let's see. So we want data animates to be visibility visible no matter what which is not happening right now I'm trying to figure out why that's not happening uh let's take a look opening the dead tools it should be visibility visible but uh oh wait data animates yeah everything should be visible inside of there so the shoe itself the hidden shoe the shoe is that talking to myself at this point. But um, yeah, we're just, again, using Shaw's 
visibility, hidden visibility, visible technique to just ensure that only some things are hidden uh, with each element. And right now that that's not the case. This is hidden for, oh, oh, opacity. I, I took Sorry, that I, off. I took that off the, uh, the box. I, I wish you could add opacity for only certain things. Um, but the opacity zero is uh, affecting the entire shoot box, apparently. And um, yeah. Uh, so where where are you? Just trying to find. Uh, all right. Okay, so an animate. So maybe just maybe this shoot. Wait a minute. Okay. So yeah, uh, animate. So all right. So yeah, this. Opacity zero. You know what? For now, let's remove the opacity. Oh god, now everything is a bit of a <laughs> okay. Um Yeah, great. Yeah. Alright, wait, wait, wait. So data yeah, active, so Let's say and just for now, and not dot shoebox. Opacity zero. Okay. So now we're back to our normal behavior <laughs> where uh, we have the shoeboxes visible, which is great. Uh, I don't know about you, but they're a little bit crowded yeah. on my end. It and we need to fix the size of those. Um, like literally fix the size to be a set with or something. Well, uh, what's happening? I think the sizing is, is correct. Um, zero. Yeah, the sizing is, is correct. I think it's just... Um, Something's. Oh, it's your. It's it's this. So this needs to move. There we go. Well, what happened? All right. Uh, your data active was overriding the. Um. Shoebox. Uh, ah, so was stuff. it data hyperactive? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Since... Ah. I, I do you do you have an insert key on your keyboard? I don't. So I have a MacBook okay. Pro, and I don't know where any of the keys are. So yeah, uh, that causes a lot of frustration for me. Mm. So okay, yeah. So your well, data so size is they're sized correctly, but they're a bit big. Did I do this? What happens if I remove that? Uh, let's see. Nice. And these boxes are pretty big. <laughs> a little bit. What if... Can we do percents? So I can mess up everything. Yeah. It probably will. <laughs> um they're they're not they're not bad on on my screen okay um, let's see shoe oops let's see shoe box oh you have a fair what so let's say no well, i made them tiny <laughs> <laughs> tiny shoes which is fine. I mean, all we have to do now is center them, really. Uh, or center the shoe box. Which... What, what did you adjust? Uh... Okay. I, I adjusted the CSS variable, the width, the X width. Okay. Um, uh, also, we'll do not like that. More... Not that skinny. Auto. Can we center them? Ah, look, they're centered. Nice. 
Nice. That out. Cool. But the problem is when you stretch the screen, they still get a little bit big. Like they. Um, uh, oh, you know what? What do you have as the perspective? This is a consideration because when you move the screen, the perspective stays the same. It stays 500 pixels, but the, uh, it's based on viewport units. So that's going to change. So what if we change uh, that to 100 V min? Oh, let's just try that out. Uh, it's still, uh, yeah. We'll probably want that to just be locked into viewport width and we'll do x60 yeah but the thing is that really wide size it just it gets pretty big so hmm. yeah it's it's just our our sizing overall with um things yeah 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 Hmm. All right, let's uh, try to reach a stopping point here. So, yeah, um, I think we're uh, pretty good as is here. Just a just a couple of sizing issues, but nothing too bad. Yeah. Yep. Some overlap stuff happening. Yeah, some overall just clean up that, that can happen. Um, we'll do a little, little adjusting um, or, or some follow-up. Mm -hmm. um, that's... Uh, is our... Where's that black border coming from? Oh, the outlines. Nobody oh. knows. Right. All right, yeah. Shall we uh, deflect? Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. So this is the part of the show known as Keyflections, uh, a quick review of the techniques we've used uh, so far to build this animation. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and ask us in the chat or in the comments, and we'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Oh, also, if you've enjoyed watching us so far, you can follow and subscribe here on Twitch or YouTube or pledge at patreon.com slash keyframers. Links are available below and they go towards, you know, helping us buy shoes because we need shoes. All of the shoes. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, today's animation is number 10, Shoeboxes Swipe Transition by Sang Win. Uh, and it's got a lot of lovely elements to it um, a lot of uh, a lot of little great pieces um, I'd even deserve a little a little follow-up to to do uh, some some proper cleanup here um, but yeah mostly mostly focused on this this kind of transition from from the text uh, to the to the boxes themselves um, so that's where uh, where we got to um, so yeah, we've got our <coughs> our shoe selector container uh, with a bunch of individual shoes in them. Uh, the currently selected shoe is data active, uh, and that's just a simple JavaScript toggle that we've done uh, several times before. Um, so for all of the shoes, if you click on them, um, it removes data active from the um, existing data active one uh, and sets uh, data active on that particular element. Then within our CSS, we're handling all of those transitions um, using, using that data active attribute. Um, so mm -hmm. you can see that a few places throughout uh, that, that just helps trigger um, what, the, what the active one is and what, what transition should be happening at that time. Uh, we also use the um, the adjacent sibling and uh, whatever sibling selector uh, to to target the elements after the active. So that's why uh, when you click to the left, the content comes in from the left. When you click to the right, the content comes in from the right, uh, and then the shoes disappear. 
Um, yeah, so that's basically the the overall transition and and um, and uh, effect that that we're going for. Um, and then uh, let's see. David right now is adding in some some gradients to give some nice uh, depth yeah, effect. Uh, I, I love that realism. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that's <laughs> that's helpful. That's one thing I wanted to get in there. You know, maybe even add in a, a linear linear gradient that repeats to give it that corrugated feel. You know. Wow, there's... there we go. Check it out. <laughs> nice. That's looking good. Uh, so I'll I'll try to uh, summarize the the uh, shoebox effect. So we've got some some 3D CSS transforms. We whiteboarded a whole bunch of things um, that you'll want to go back and see. Um, we try to explain that uh, basically what's happening uh, on our. Well, I do. This is organized here. Yeah, let me move this up top. That there, that there, go. All right. So uh, on our shoe selector, we've given it a perspective. Uh, for three D CSS transforms, this is this is important. You have to you have to have a perspective on on the parent, and then uh, any of the children within that um, have to have transform style preserve three D. Uh, so we've got that applied here to shoe, uh, even though. Sh the shoe element itself is not 3D transformed. The children within it are, so it still needs that transform style preserved through 3D, so that cascades down. Uh, Shoebox also has transform style preserved 3D, as well as the sides uh, that are within, within that transform style preserved 3D. Um, so we, we talked a lot about um, the, the way that you get these elements set up in a box shape uh, with 3D transforms. Uh, which mostly centers around uh, rotating it on the proper axis, axis, and then translating it out uh, to get it in the in the right position. So right now, uh, by default, all of the sides start out in the center, uh, but you rotate it the the proper direction. So if you want the one of the sides, you would rotate it like so, which would be rotate X or rotate uh, Z, I believe. And then you would translate out on uh, the Z axis to, to get it to where you want to go. Uh, so that's, that's what all of these variables, uh, whoa, okay, there we go. Uh, that's what all of these variables are for down here. The Z is, is how far it needs to go out in those directions. Um, the the rotation variable is is what axis it needs to be rotated on, and then some color variables that are uh, not used anymore <laughs> because uh, David has added proper gradients. Yeah, uh, no, we're still using them. <laughs> okay, well, sure. Uh, so that's that's the basics of it, and then and then the top we did something a little special. We added a lid inside of there. Uh, the top is actually not not really showing up because we want to be able to see through it and so our lid is what uh is what has the actual um is what you actually see there as that orange piece uh and that uh is so that the 3d transform becomes a lot easier because the top is already in the proper position uh so we just want that child within the top to to flip up uh, which makes things so much simpler uh, with transform style preserve 3D on that, obviously, to get that cascade. And then uh, the transform uh, rotate X 90 degrees, which causes that, that flip up effect or up um, so that you can see the shoes inside. Mm hmm. Beautiful there's, shoes. There's a lot of room to add extra detail, like the, the sides of the lid and, and all of that. Uh, but uh you know maybe maybe a follow up we can adjust that but anyway yeah um, the basics are there yeah anything else to cover um 
No, just the uh, general idea that we talked about at the beginning of the episode of just having layers on top of each other. You're going to see that theme a lot in our episodes, just uh, conditioning it as layers and using the visibility, visible, and visibility hidden trick to make sure that certain things are shown and hidden, uh, depending on what's active and not. And uh, yeah, just your standard transitions uh, based on state, and you're good to go. That's right. I know I breezed through that, but we're doing this in almost every single one of our episodes at this point. <laughs> right. Well, so so much of UIs is is based on having um, you know things things kind of on top of each other or coming in from from specific positions, uh, and and then with the way like you want to size things with the web, uh, having those layered on top of each other, especially with our uh, display grid trick. Um, helps everything get in the in the proper place, and then you use your transforms, which are the most performant, uh, to to get them actually uh, out of place and back into place with with transition. Mm -hmm. So yeah, three D transforms, lots of uh, nice transitions. Oh yeah, I think we got a good little little animation here. Mm hmm. I'd say so myself. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's it for today. You've been watching Keyframers. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to see more from David and I, there are many ways that you can support us. Uh, you can pledge at patreon.com slash keyframers. That helps us out each month. Uh, you can also like and subscribe at youtube.com slash keyframers, uh, where we have all of our past episodes, and you can go back and watch this one uh, in a little bit. Uh, and you can uh, subscribe and participate on the live streams here on Twitch. Yeah, and uh, we accept submissions for future episodes. This is just one we saw and thought was cool, just like so many of our other ones. So tweet at Keyframers with any animations you'd like to see made. And you could also present questions or challenges to us, and we'll try to answer them on the air. Uh, today was a little bit quiet, but that's fine, because, you know, this was a fun one, and I guess we got everyone, you know, on the same the same page as us right so, nobody nobody had any questions at all about 3d transforms so everybody's everybody's a master out there no there. everyone felt so shoe about everything oh sorry i just had it tied on that note tied uh, up. yeah anyway sorry before i dig myself too old please be sure to share this video and demo across your social platforms and your local shoe stores yes thank you so much for joining us until next time Adios, enemigos. Adios.